be or not to be? That is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles by opposing and everyone hope you're all having a wonderful day today today we're gonna to be talking about a very very cool setup on a budget something that people have been asking me about ever since the pricing of 2020 has kind of exploded on most parts and accessories but before we get into that if you'd like to support the channel in any way you can like share and subscribe because of course all that stuff is free on top of that by the time this video launches I will have a new steel targets and plates up on the website and they will be hopefully grinded painted and shipped uh, or and shipping and on top of that there's also subscribe star which is basically a pro to a patreon where you get a lot of additional content on top of what I post to Instagram and YouTube and there will also be exclusive content on there for instance uh, different sort of build videos uh, form one suppressor type stuff that is coming up very very soon as I just got approved for that so there's a whole lot of additional content on there on top of giveaways every month one last thing to note before we get going uh, to the YouTube reviewer watching this video all footage was filmed in a safe, controlled environment on private property and private ranges, and the firearms that we will be discussing are going to be unmodified in their original configuration as they came from the factory. Now, with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and discuss how you can buy a complete setup for a little bit under $600 or a lot over $600 depending on your deal finding skills and you can put together a rifle that is very very competent and can work in a variety of situations. So first up, let's go ahead and talk about the upper receiver. Now the upper receiver itself, I bought the kit complete from Delta Team Tactical and they do give me a discount on their products as well as I have a discount code for you guys as well in the description. Uh, so the upper receiver itself, uh, with the barrel and everything else, minus the bolt care group, was $220 uh, at the time that I bought it uh, quite some time ago at this point. So let's go ahead and talk about the most important component on any upper receiver, which is, uh, in my opinion, the barrel cl followed closely uh, in second place by the bolt. So the barrel itself is a Mercury Precision uh, 16 and a half inch barrel. Now I'm not sure if Mercury Precision is a real barrel manufacturer or if it's a rebranded um, Ballistic Advantage or something like that because I wasn't really able to find anything about them online. However, I am very, very impressed with the barrel. So 16 and a half inch because of course this is a rifle upper receiver. Uh, it has a one in seven twist with a 5.56 NATO chambering which is one of my preferred. Um, if you're looking for just the ultimate accurate rifle, do everything, you're probably looking for a one in eight, two, two, three wild chambering. But for most people, five, five, six is a stronger chamber and one in seven will handle those really heavy bullets really, really well. So if you have a lot of match ammunition laying around right now, this barrel will do really well. On top of that, it is a mid-length gas system. Now, one of my biggest problems with Bear Creek Arsenal, another company that I do uh, a lot of work for and do videos on their products, uh, is that all their 16-inch barrels are basically carbine-length gas systems because they're all M4 profile. So I know that this is not a Bear Creek Arsenal barrel because Delta Team Tactical does sell rebranded uh, Bear Creek Arsenal barrels, which are good barrels, but they're rebranded as ELD Performance. So I know that this isn't a BCA barrel, and it is a government profile if I haven't mentioned, but it's not a true government profile. So a true government profile 
actually has a lighter taper in the center section than it next up to the gas block and then it has a heavier section at the end. This is almost a straight taper. So it's basically a perfect straight taper in the middle section and in the end and then it next up to of course the gas block. So it's more of a middle weight profile than a true government profile and I actually like that a little bit more. Now 16 and a half inches Again, this is a rifle and a 16 inch upper, 16 and a half inch upper, somewhere in that range is one of the best all around barrel lengths. You're getting a lot of velocity out of 55 grain projectiles uh, or 62 or even 75, 77. You're getting a lot of really good performance out of it and you're not sacrificing a whole lot and it's still not too unwieldy like a 18 to 20 inch barrel will be. So a 16 inch barrel, is a really excellent all around upper, especially if you're looking for one on a budget. As I mentioned, this kit at the time of recording, uh, or not at the time of recording, at the time I bought it a few months ago was $220 delivered to my door. So the barrel, 16 and a half inch, one and seven twist, five, five, six chambering, mid length gas system. The only thing that I dislike about the barrel is it did not come pre-dimpled, so I actually had to go out of my way and dimple it, which is very, very easy to do. A dimpling jig is like 20 bucks online, and it's very, very easy to do if you just have like a drill bit laying around or something like that. Uh, it's also very easy to mess up, but of course I've done it quite a bit now. Uh, so I didn't factor that into the cost of the upper receiver. Um, and of course you don't need to dimple your barrel, absolutely 100%, but I would say it is highly, highly recommended that you should dimple your barrel. So this one is dimpled, but I had to dimple it myself which took me about five minutes, but again, I've done it quite a bit at this point. Moving forward from there really quickly, we will mention it. It does have a sort of hybrid muzzle device on it. So it's a single chamber, a very small single, single chamber break on both sides. So it does a really effective job of reducing the recoil, even on a 5.56, which does not have a lot of recoil. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned is that this is gassed extremely well. We'll talk about it a little later, but that combined with the single port uh, muzzle brake does a really excellent job of making it basically not move at all when you shoot it. On top of that, it does have two small ports on top, which of course helps to control that vertical recoil, though again, there's really not that much. And then it kind of splits off into a three pronged flash hider. Now with really cheap ammunition, I was still getting a tiny, tiny bit of muzzle flash, like uh, using wool for tool or anything like that. I was getting a tiny, tiny bit of flash every now and again, uh, but for the most part, there was no flash. And if you're using high quality fast burning uh, powders or ammunition with fast burning powders, you are not gonna be really experiencing much muzzle flash at all because again, the brake, there is a brake, but it's not very aggressive, very, very small ports on it. And again, extremely effective. You do not need a large brake on this whatsoever. On top of that, even though it is a muzzle brake, it is not unpleasant to shoot or unpleasant to be around like some other brakes are, or especially short barreled brakes. Now let's go ahead and talk about the handguard because the handguard, in my opinion, is actually one of the highlights of the build and one of the reasons that yeah, this specific build caught my eye because if you guys don't know, Delta Team Tactical, they have a lot of different build kits. And so some of them are literally just a bunch of different parts thrown together. And so some of them are really good ideas. Some of them are not so good ideas. This one here is a very, very good one. So you have a 13 and a half inch rail, which in my opinion is perfect for a 16 inch barrel. I don't need it to cover up the end of my barrel. Uh, it makes it a lot easier to access your muzzle device or put on suppressors or other things like that. It is a seven sided M lock and it is actually in spec M lock. So it's very easy easy to attach things to your m -lock. Uh, Some m -lock rails are not actually in spec and you will need to like mallet them in with like a rubber mallet or something to get them to actually fit. Uh, this does work on all seven sides, which is really, really nice. On top of that, your retaining mention or your retention method is two very large oversized screws that lock into the backside so they can't rotate. And then you also have two anti-rotation tabs on either side that fit very, very snug up against your receiver. So the mounting method is very, very secure. Uh, on top of that, on top you'll notice that it is scalloped inside the M-lock slots. They're not marked, but I don't need them to be marked. So they are scalloped on the inside, so there's a lot of material removed on there. On top of that, uh, there is also venting all the way across the top. So this entire build with the lower receiver and everything on it is a little bit under seven pounds, not including the other stuff that we'll show later. Uh, but it's a very, very lightweight, very easy to point system, even though it's not necessarily like your super short tactical 10, 10 fives or 12 fives, whatever else uh, you guys are running. But the rail, in my opinion, 
even though it is a AIM Sports rail, which I've had problems with some of their rails in the past, this one here seems to be very, very good. The material itself is not the thinnest material, which does not bug me whatsoever. I prefer a little more meat on my handguard, so if and when I drop it, it doesn't bend on me. I have had some ultra thin rails on me uh, bend on me, even much more expensive rails bend on me that were ultra thin. Uh, because of course there's just it's aluminum and when there's not a lot of reinforcing material there they do just tend to bend fairly easily because it's not that strong of a material but uh, overall the finish quality on it is really good m-lock slots scalloped top lightweight 13 and a half inches long pretty much the perfect handguard in my opinion now moving back from there we have a upper receiver it is a 7075 forged upper receiver nothing special about it whatsoever which is just the way i like it it does have its forward assist and a dust cover the standard accoutrements i believe they are dpms which again perfectly fine no issues with any of that it's very very standard uh, mil spec charging handle which actually came in the other part of the kit which we'll talk about in a minute and then we have our bolt carrier group so our bolt carrier group as far as I can tell it's just a standard mil spec bolt carrier group I have not cleaned it whatsoever um, and I put about at this point six seven hundred rounds through this upper receiver I've taken it to competitions and to uh, like tactical like training type thing we'll talk about that sort of stuff in a minute but the bolt carrier group I have not cleaned the staking on it is really good really substantial staking on top of it and everything else just looks very very mil spec not a lot of wear and tear again I'm not expecting something like this to fail before hopefully 3,000 rounds at a minimum for a very, very cheap bolt, uh, but it seems to be working just fine. Again, no issues with it so far. So that pretty much does it for the Delta Team tactical part of the upper receiver. Now let's go ahead and talk about how I kitted it out. And again, the point of this was to be something that's effective and usable, but also as cheap as possible during the 2020 gun apocalypse. So uh, the first thing we're going to talk about is the sights. These are Magpul backup iron sights, uh, which of course are polymer and they're flip up. Some people online don't like these, but I've never had an issue with them ever. I've never had them not pop up on me. I've never had one of them break and I've dropped them many, many times. I've owned a couple different sets. And again, they're fairly nice, especially for the money. I picked this set up for like 50 bucks on the used market from a guy who just had them laying around. So for the money very very good there are also some other good fixed iron sights that are actually made out of metal you know like aluminum that sort of thing uh, from like utg they make really good fixed sights and flip up sights that are again uh, made out of aluminum for around the 40 to 45 dollar range so there are other good options for iron sights on top of that uh, even though I do not shoot iron sights all that much, I did quite a bit of shooting with just the iron sights on the upper receiver, uh, including taking them to a tactical style match where it wasn't really all about speed. It was more about making sure that you hit your very small targets uh, in a timed manner, not necessarily a overall time, but you had a three second rule. So if you don't take out multiple targets within that three seconds, uh, then you basically your whole stage is a watch at, wash at that point. Uh, and you also have limited round count. So you have to make every single round count. And of course, using just iron sights on a lot of one very small targets. Uh, in certain cases, you only had like a four inch square to hit with again, only iron sights, but also low contrast targets. But that being said, I was absolutely able to make these iron sights work. And again, this very, very cheap build, but the gun really doesn't matter all that much. As long as it's functioning and your sights are on, you should be good to go. It's really a matter of your own personal skills, not really the gun that you're running. Again, as long as your gun is to a certain point, it's really, it comes down to you, not the equipment. Uh, next up, which is something that is actually pretty nice. Uh, is the Surefire G2X Lite. So the Surefire G2X, I bought a couple of these during Black Friday, uh, and I already had a couple on hand. They are very, very good for, again, around 50 to 60 bucks, depending on when you buy them. Uh, if you look around online, there are several videos calling these the best budget weapon lights because they kind of are 600 lumens, a really decent throw, maybe 80 to 100 yards is where you can really comfortably, possibly ID something in the dark. Again, for my personal situation, 80 to 100 yards in the dark is very hard to do when you live out in the woods. Uh, so it works very, very well. Certainly more than enough for indoors and not overly bright. It's not going to wash anything out or something like that. But very, very strong light, zero issues with it. It is kind of caked in carbon. So I kind of need to clean off the lens a little bit because it is, of course, angled right next to one of the ports on the muzzle brake. So it gets coated uh, quite often. Uh, the next thing on the bottom, 
I run these a lot. These are UTG uh, aluminum ham stops. They're like 15 bucks. And again, they're just really good. They're really lightweight and they're incredibly strong. So is, as you'll see in some of the footage, I'm bracing it off of a tank trap or whatever you want to call it. And I'm using the ham stop to really anchor it down and get uh, good shots off on a decent sized target at like 50 or 60 yards or however far we were shooting. Uh, next up on the upper receiver, last little thing is I have a tiny little M uh, Magpul offset quick detach loop for my sling which we'll show you guys when we talk about the lower um, but other than that that is the upper receiver so the upper receiver itself is 220 dollars iron sights were 50 dollars light was 50 dollars the mount that the light is on is actually a light uh, mount that i got uh from an amazon light that was like $20, so I'm not really including that in the cost because I have a bunch of these lying around from other really, really cheap lights that I bought. And the UTG hand stop here on the bottom, which doesn't really matter to me. Yeah, you could take it or leave it. I do like them a lot. That's why I run them a lot. Uh, but that one there was like 10, 15 bucks, depending on where you get it from. So now let's go ahead and talk about the lower receiver, which is a very important part of any build. So the basic lower receiver, this is a Anderson manufacturing lower receiver. Now I've had some good Anderson lowers, some bad Anderson lowers, uh, the poor pony or whatever you want to call it. Um, they generally speaking though work. Uh, as long as you know what you're getting into and you're fine with doing a little bit of troubleshooting in some areas with certain LPKs, I've had trigger pins walk loose. Uh, and again, that's only in Anderson manufacturing lowers that I've had these issues, but it hasn't happened with this one. So, so far so good, but I was able to get this guy from a local FFL for $45. Uh, and again, no transfer fees or anything like that because I was able to pick it up local. That is how I recommend getting your lower receivers, just trying to go to your local FFL and either going onto their website or just asking him in person, hey, what is the cheapest lower you can order for me, whether that's complete or just the stripped lower receiver. I got it in the stripped configuration for, again, $45. Now. The lower parts kit, the buffer tube, buffer setup, uh, all of that stuff, including the stock and the bolt carrier group and the charging handle I got from Delta Team Tactical. As I already mentioned, they give me stuff at a discounted price, not free, but a discounted price. And they also give you guys a discount code, which is linked in the description. Uh, the, what it is, is it's called their finish your build kit. So it's basically... If you buy an upper receiver from them, minus a bolt carrier group and charging handle, a finisher build kit is basically everything else. And again, it's a kit, so it has a ton of different options in there. The one I specifically chose came with this really odd looking uh, buttstock. It's basically, it looks kind of like a standard carbine buttstock, but the nice thing about it is the on off feature is very nice because you basically just pull this tab forward, lift up, and then you can just slide the whole thing off. On top of that, it has four QD, four metal QD points on uh, two on each side, and it has your standard uh, sling swivel point if you wanted to run your sling swivel just through the stock itself. So, the stock, even though it looks really cheap, it is really lightweight. It comes off nice and easy, and it does have four QD points, which again works well with my uh, Grove Tech sling that we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, other than that, the grip that it comes with, this one here is the Magpul MOE, but I don't believe it came with that. I think it came with this UTG grip, which is very similar, actually a little bit shallower of a grip angle, but it has fingers on it. It's a little rubberized. Not not my favorite, but they do work, and I have these on other builds, and they work just fine. I just swipped, swapped it out for the Magpul MOE, which I have laying around, and the trigger LPK and safety, all that other fun stuff uh, is very, very standard, nothing special whatsoever. So even so, with a standard mil-spec trigger, you're still looking at maybe five and a half, six pounds. Very smooth, no grit whatsoever. So in my opinion, a mil-spec trigger it's very, very easy to shoot quick with because they have a very, very positive forced reset. I haven't had any issues with light primer strikes or anything like that whatsoever. The buffer tube is a mil-spec buffer tube and it did come with this kind of interesting end plate here that has sling loops on both sides and a QD point in the middle. I'm not a huge fan of it, I don't use it. If I was using this on a really small pistol build, I might use the sling point for a single point sling, but I don't use a single point sling on my rifles. Um, and on top of that, the buffer setup is a standard uh, three ounce carbine buffer and a carbine spring. Nothing special whatsoever, but when you put the full package together, it works extremely well. 
But when you put it all together, you almost get something that's a little better than the sum of its parts. So as I mentioned a little bit earlier, uh, it is gassed extremely well, like basically on the bleeding edge of what's reliable and unreliable. Um, with steel cased ammunition, it's ejecting at about 3.30 to 4 o'clock, uh, very, very consistently. And the only issues I had with it were with 55 grain Wolf and Tula ammunition, uh, where it would not lock back the magazine on only certain magazines. For instance, the UTG mags that I have, it would not lock back on those, but those are kind of crappy magazines. Uh, but that was the only issues I had with it whatsoever. With full power military loads like Hornady M193, which I did a lot of shooting with, it would cycle 100% without issue um, and with 62 grain silver bear again perfect no issues and I didn't have any issues cycling with the really weak 55 grain uh, wolf or Tula it just wouldn't always hold back the magazine so in my opinion maybe it is 5% under gas, but this is actually an upper receiver that I will be suppressing when I get my Form 1 suppressor, all the parts in for that. Uh, so I'm actually happy that it's a tiny, tiny, tiny bit on the under gas side so that, because of course it's not running an adjustable gas block, it's just a steel uh, low profile ga gas block that's on here. So I'm not gonna be throwing on an adjustable gas block or anything like that. I'm just gonna throw a suppressor on it and deal with the additional back pressure because again, it is a little bit, a little bit on the low side, uh, but again, 100% flawless. Uh, when I was using it in the tactical competition type thing, I was using it with Hornady M193, so I just wouldn't have any of those issues to begin with. So last thing on this part of the build that I have not mentioned yet is the sling. So this is actually the Grove Tech uh, Sentinel. Now I'm sure a lot of you guys have no idea who Grove Tech is, but I just want to say first off that I actually paid for this sling with my own money, but I have another video coming of some Grove Tech products that I did not purchase with my own money that I uh, got from them for free, basically. So Grove Tech is actually a local company to me. They're located just about an hour south. I've actually been inside of their facility, done a tour of their facility, and I actually, funny story, when I was working for my previous company, I was a inside outside salesman. I actually got their account for my old company. So I got to tour their facility as a salesman and now I get their stuff for free as a YouTuber, which I think is very, very funny. So they actually buy product from my old company. Uh, and their, their products are very, very high quality. Everything is made and assembled in the USA. And this Sentinel, which this is the Sentinel uh, sling, I think it costs uh, $35 to $45, depending on where you get it from. It is very nice, extremely well padded back here, very, very comfortable for long periods of time. Again, I did use this sling in the competition uh, because I knew that you were gonna need to switch weapons at least once per stage, depending on what you were doing. You also needed to sling your rifle multiple times during uh, one stage where you had to drag a pallet across a field and you had to pick up a tire and run with the tire. So there were multiple times when you had to sling your rifle and so this was an excellent sling, very, very comfortable. And it is of course quick adjustable so you can loosen and tighten as you need. On top of that, for the $35, it comes with its steel hardware versus the Magpul MSI sling, which is actually on that rifle or that pistol right there. Uh, that one there uh, does not come with the hardware. So you have to purchase all the hardware separately, whereas this one does come with it. It's an excellent sling, especially for the $35 price tag. It comes in a lot of different colors. I chose this sniper gray color. So everything that you see here on the build, including the lower, everything that is on here, uh, I believe I priced it out and it comes to right at $590. Now. I think the title is going to be under $600. It might be like $550 or something like that because there are some ways to cut even more corners than I did. For instance, you can get a lot of really cheap nylon slings for like 20 bucks that don't have the QD hardware that just attach to your stock and then maybe hook into your rail system. You can definitely cut off some extra money from this build than I did. This is just set up how I like, and again, this is still on a very, very small budget comparatively. Uh, the hand stop you could remove, you could go with a slightly cheaper light. LA Police Gear is another company that I'm gonna start doing work with and doing some videos for. Um, they actually make some really decent aluminum lights that are like $30. So again, you can cut out about 20 bucks uh, from the light. I do like the Surefire G2X. I do think that they are some of the best budget weapon lights on the market. You could save a little bit of money on your iron sights by going with something like UTG. So again, you can knock the price tag of this complete build 
using 90% the same components, you could knock it down. And especially if you use my promo code 5% off at Delta Team Tactical, I don't get any money for that. That's just for you guys. Um, you could get this down to about $550 or under $550, which is very, very close to what I did in my most popular video, which was the $500 AR-15 civilian rifle setup, which is a really terrible video compared to what I do now. Um, but you can still do that sort of thing in 2020. You just have to know where to look. And so that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I get so many requests and questions on where do I buy something? Is this company good? Uh, you know, what to look for when you're buying something that's super, super budget. People don't know where to go for this sort of things. They don't know what's reputable. And so I do try to help people out in that regard and try to get them at least on the right track, especially with this build because the way this is set up right now for $550, if in two weeks, four weeks, a month, something like that, I end up with, hey, I have a couple hundred extra bucks to spend. I want to improve my setup that I already have. I'm not replacing anything off of this. I can just add a red dot to it, add an LPVO to it, and you're good to go. Speaking of that, let's go ahead and get into the last part of the video, which is going to be on adding just a few components to get even more value out of your setup. So right here, what we have is a SIG Romeo MSR, which is a very budget friendly red dot right now. They're about $100 to $120 online. This is the red model I paid for with my own money. Uh, so far, extremely impressed with it. Has very, very crisp glass. Uh, no on or off feature or auto on or off, I should say which is really nice for me, which means I can set it and forget it. And this model has a 20,000 hour battery life or two years. So basically right now I'm running it on setting six and it's a little too bright for indoors. So if you're using this as a home defense gun, again, this optic is only $100. So it takes your $600, $550 gun up to $650 or $700. So that is still a very inexpensive budget rifle that will absolutely get the job done. Again, the rifle doesn't really matter as much as you, the shooter, does. So whether or not you can keep up with your rifle is the main point that I want to get here. Something that I do want to say is that even without the red dot on it, I cannot outshoot this rifle. Uh, basically, <laughs> in any circumstance where I missed a target, where I did something wrong, it was never the gun's fault. It was never me outrunning the gun, me waiting for the gun to do something. It was always me holding back the gun. Me being the driver was the limiting factor in this build. Even without the red dot, with just the iron sights, the gun can always go way faster and way more accurate than I can because I am the limitation factor in this gun. Again, not the gun itself, it is me holding back the gun. And then again, if you wanted to throw in even a little bit more money, you could throw in something like the Sig Romeo, or not the Sig Romeo, the Sig Juliet 3. This is the Juliet 3 Micro, which is very new as far as I'm aware, and it's also very good. It's better than the Vortex VMX3. And I actually bought the magnifier and the MSR for 250 bucks in a combo deal, which was very, very good. So far, very, very impressed with them. And they don't really go along with the cheap part of the build. But again, if you buy a cheap rifle, something like this, and just run iron sights on it in the beginning, get good with your iron sights, then you can upgrade to a dot magnifier or LPVO. You have a lot of different options at that point to upgrade your gun while you still have all of the basics covered with the initial build. So that's about it for the video, guys. My voice is quickly going out on me as this is a little bit of a longer of a video for me, especially in the recording process. So like I said in the beginning, if you want to help out the channel in any way, you can like, share, and subscribe. You can also purchase targets from my company, which is the first link in the description. On top of that, if you want links to good deals and equipment that I recommend, discount codes, all that stuff, that's also on my website under a new tab, which I believe is guns and gear. And it, you just go to that tab and it will have all of my deals, my discount codes, and a, a bunch of equipment that I recommend. And we're gonna be adding to that more and more as time goes on. But like I said, that's about it for the video. Thank you guys once again for watching. Let me know what you guys think of this down below and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace off.